Hey everyone, you're tuned into InfoQuench with Jeff and Amy. Join us as we talk about anything and everything. All the stuff that makes life interesting. So let's get to it. Hey everybody and welcome to InfoQuench. I'm your host Jeff. I'm Amy. And this podcast we're going to be talking about Airbnbs. That's right, we're going to be talking about tips for Airbnbs. How many tips? How many tips? 25 tips. Is it just the tips? Just the tips. Oh, right. So uh, we stayed at a fair amount of Airbnbs in our lifetime. Maybe four, maybe five. Uh, that's, maybe that's uh, not a lot. More, no, more than that. More than, fi- more than that? More, more than five? Th- yes, definitely more than that. And in, oh. in a few different countries, too. So Shows how much I'm paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leave the bookings up to me. There was a time when Airbnb wasn't even an option, but it is now, and uh, it's a great one. So I know a lot of people... I talk to uh, a lot of our friends, uh, you know, coworkers that stay in Airbnbs regularly. And actually, it was a coworker who suggested to me that we do a, an episode on tips around Airbnbs. Oh, go away. Okay. So there's a lot of tips on Airbnbs. Before we get into the tips, though, uh, what is what does Airbnb mean? I know it's the name of a company, but what? Why Air? Why B and B? Do you know? Uh, I actually do know this. Okay. What I know. Is, I know how you love to just pop the questions on me, but I actually yeah. do have the answer on this one. All right. What is so what? It, the company was uh, conceived by its founders when they put an air mattress in their living room, and ah. effectively they basically turned their apartment into a bread and breakfast. So they lived a in bread Sam, and breakfast. A bed. A bread and breakfast. <laughs> Lots a, a bed on and, the bread. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no, a bed and breakfast. They lived yeah. in San Francisco and they wanted to sort of offset the cost of their high rent. So they basically just opened up what they called an air bed and breakfast. Oh, so okay. having the, using an air mattress in their apartment. I so see. the original website was airbedandbreakfast.com. Oh, and it got shortened to Airbnb, which stands for bed and breakfast. Because Airbnb home. is an, like not an offshoot, but the whole uh, business concept is is uh, off of another uh, company that... Yes, did... which we'll talk about a little bit oh. later on. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So what is tip number one? T- about tip number Air... one is around super hosts. B&Bs. Super host. Right. So if you've been on Airbnb and if you haven't, definitely check it out. The app is worth getting. I don't always say that, but with Airbnb, I think their app is definitely the way to navigate their their whole uh, selection of of mm. accommodations. And they have what are called super hosts, which are just hosts that have you know high accolades. Uh, they've received great reviews. But what's unique around the super hosts is a lot of times they'll have multiple accommodations. So the number one tip is not just to look for super hosts, but Consider staying in an accommodation that may be fairly a, a fairly new listing, doesn't yeah. necessarily have reviews yet or has a, only a few reviews, but if it's a super host and you okay. check their other listings and then they you have, have a cons- good chance that it's going to be a decent right. property. And the benefit of, you know, taking the chance on a, on a newer listing without all of the reviews is the prices are much lower, which we've experienced. Yeah. When we stayed at one in St. Stephen. Right. There was right. one just outside St. Stephen that was gorgeous and we stayed at it uh, probably two years ago Yeah, and it's already, you know, I think it's tripled the price. It's tripled in price, yeah. Night, it was night, waterfront. It's, it's now, we, now we wouldn't want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would be, a, you know, too rich for our blood. But when we stayed yeah. there, it was a great deal. And it was that's, a great deal. It, it was, they were it, trying it, to build their 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 uh, positive feedbacks, right? Basically. Well, they, they were super hosts. So mm. it was, you know, it was a perfect example of these. It was a couple who had properties around the world. Yeah. And all different countries. So and they would basically travel around to their different properties and that's where they would stay. But they would, you know, all of their other properties had great reviews. So when they opened up this new property, uh, even though there weren't a whole lot of reviews right. to go by, we trusted that they were consistently good hosts. And we were right. And we were right. So and that's a great way to take advantage of maybe a lower rate um, and minimize your risk. Yeah. Well, that's a great idea. Maybe, maybe for people who had ne- haven't uh, used Airbnb, Airbnb ever before or don't know anything about it, maybe we should talk briefly about how it actually works. So you go on the website and then you sign, you sign up, basically. You give them all your credentials and stuff. Yeah, so, so Air, Airbnb is, yeah, for, for those of you who aren't familiar, it's people who are using their own accommodations, um, 
you know, they might have an apartment or, or, or house a, or yeah. cottage or something, and they're renting it out to people. So right. they're not an official hotel, not an official business. They're just doing it on their own, using their own property. Sometimes you'll have people who have, you know, an extra property that they're doing this with. Sometimes it's their main home and they just stay elsewhere when they're renting it out. It's so interesting because, so is it, is it officially a business? Like, is it a business when you rent out a part of your home? Well, I mean, I don't know. Your... This is a question for CRA. Okay, I was just wondering because I just wonder if it's tax, tax like if you tax. I don't if... know all the ins and outs of being a host, but yeah, uh, I guess yeah, yeah, we I don't know. There's probably certain once you hit a certain amount of income, okay. I would expect anyway. it would be taxable. But again, right. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not an accountant. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm just curious. We're way off, off, off. I'm uh, just curious if it's like a you know like a cottage industry, you know, where you just sort of. You just say, yeah, like, let's just make a little bit of money and whatever. Well, or I mean, if it's of like a full it's, on business, you it's have to international. It. So, I mean, obviously the rules would mm. differ depending on what country that you're in. Mm. Uh, Definitely. But, but the whole process is, you know, when you're signing up, you do have to sign up. You provide, you know, government uh identification as part of your registration yeah. process so that uh, they know that you're who you say you are and it's fairly straightforward very easy process because i know to airbnb do. has had problems in like bigger metropolises like uh, toronto where people are renting properties that have never really rented them before so they don't really so the people who are uh own, own the uh, property don't really know about what what what's going on oh you're uh, just you're oh Doing a lot of movement there and oh. shaking the mic. Oh, I'm oh, I'm shaking the mic. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, so they they made this new rule just recently where you need to have rented like a few properties before, or like just get a good reviews. I'm not exactly sure exactly, but like they're not just going to rent properties to anybody because they have huge parties. Are you talking about the host? Or are you talking about the people who stay there? I'm talking about both, like the host people who own the properties aren't going to rent just to like younger people. There's a, there's an age limit Well, there's limit a review now. process, which I'll talk about. So yeah. there are, there are review processes mm, in that's place. A, okay, cool. And I think you're talking about, they had did like a 25 Int- year, you have to be 25 years old. 25 age, years old. Yeah. Because, which is similar to a rental car. Yeah. I mean, there's risks with Airbnb and I think a lot of times, you know, any bad stories get sensationalized. But when you think of the volume of business being done through Airbnbs, it's probably a relatively low percentage exactly. that you're getting those yeah. crazy scenarios. Yeah. And I mean, those same types of situations happen in hotels as well, where you get hotel rooms that are trashed or, yeah. or different situations. Uh, number two is use Google Maps when you are doing your Airbnb search. So you may search, for instance, by city name. You may search New York City. Uh, But when you retrieve your, I guess, the search results, they could be very far out from where where you plan to stay. So Mm -hmm. make sure you actually use Google Maps because what their definition of city center may be as a host may not be your city center and you want to make sure you're close to things like public transportation uh if there's major attractions or things that you want to do yeah. if you're in town for work you want to be close to your work location mm-hmm. so don't trust that if they say they're in city center that they actually mean that check you know a lot of times they won't give you the exact address but you can at least get a you know a good if they do it's good to go on on uh, to google maps and check out the street and what else you know to see the whole neighborhood right. and that's really. actually no, tip number three is to oh. check out your street views <laughs> oh yeah so when you're in google maps take the opportunity to go to street view you can have a look at the actual building uh you know and mm-hmm. it's it's not something that's been doctored or altered or filtered uh, as as some of the pictures may be through airbnb listings that's true and you can get a good grasp of what the feel of the neighborhood is what the surrounding buildings are so definitely check out those street views and then number four is around reviews. So another great place to to be very thorough is just reading the reviews on Airbnb. And I've commented on previous episodes about the trouble with reviews on certain sites like TripAdvisor and not always being legitimate. The right. great thing about Airbnb is they have a, a wonderful process where you as a renter aren't able to see the review. So basically you're both being reviewed. You're being reviewed as somebody who's renting the property and uh, you're also reviewing the host of the property who's renting to you. Kind of like Uber. Uber is the same way apparently. Right. And you can't see the other review until you've submitted your own. Right. So you can't alter your review. You can't be, oh, you gave me a bad review, so I'm going to give you one back. That's a really smart business decision. 
for sure. And if you and you look through the reviews, you can get a really great idea of you know cleanliness, value. There's several factors that you can can look through, and you know depending on what's important to you. But also just reading through the details of the review, people can talk about how close it is to different major attractions or to maybe a subway station. Or I know it, you've gleaned you a lot insight. of really great information from reviews that were not in the original description of the property when we've gone away like you know for an airbnb you know if you're if you're here then go go check out this and all that it's really cool it's a good well, idea. i have a tendency to only go with five star reviews when i'm booking airbnbs mm-hmm. uh yeah well, it makes there's, sense there's you enough wanna... of them that you can usually you know stick with just the five stars right and, yeah and anything below that and you know, just basically cross off the list number five pay attention to language uh it'll indicate the language of the host. So, okay. you know, sometimes that may not be an issue for you, but other times if you need to communicate with the host once you're on site and there is a language barrier, just be, you know, conscious of that. You know, there's apps and things you can use to help you with translation. I'm thinking right. one property we stayed at in Nicaragua where we had to uh, speak with, you know, some of the cleaning staff oh, and, right. and ask for some things. Um, I don't know, was asking for towels or something of that of that nature but we were lucky enough that we had people with us who spoke spanish and were able to communicate otherwise you know we probably would have been out of luck and probably would have have just looked looked it up on google and did translate there that way that would it would would have worked if in a pinch you know but like to carry on a conversation would have been really tricky for sure yeah so just be aware of the language you know of the host and you know, don't, by all means, don't let that be a make or break on what you decide on a listing. No. Just be prepared so that you're able to communicate effectively. And the way Airbnbs are set up now, they're, you know, you'll have everything from somebody who is, uh, you know, living next door and renting out a property to somebody who's hired, a, you know, they may have hired a third party business to run their Airbnb property. So you could be very far removed from the original host. So if you need quick turnaround on something, if you have an issue, you just want to be able to have effective communication. Absolutely. <clears throat> Number six is to know the house rules. So Airbnbs will list house rules. Mm-hmm. They, no smoking. Exactly. And most of them will have at least a few. Yeah. Uh, but read through them carefully and make sure you abide by them because that can be enough for you to get a bad review as a guest. And that's something you definitely want to avoid. So be conscious of, uh, of what the rules are. Right. We recently stayed at a property in Fredericton. And it had a unique rule where we were not allowed to have anybody else at the property uh, Besides. Aside, from, aside from the two of us. Yeah. So, and it wasn't, yeah, I mean, a lot of the places will say house rules are no parties or, you know, no loud music after a certain hour. But this, they actually didn't want anybody else yeah. In, in now Which makes for us sense. for us it wasn't an issue because we were just spending the weekend in Fredericton but we actually did have friends who were also it would have been nice to Airbnb. have our friends over because it was such a nice Airbnb I mean, it, was it was super beautiful. nice it had a nice little reading nook you know in the window it was really nice but uh but yeah, yeah. we we we, but uh, we followed the rules honored those rules yeah so yeah know the house rules and uh make sure you abide by them number seven uh just check to see if the owners live on site or, or where they may be in relation to the property you're staying it's in. It's good to know. It's, uh, you know, some people don't care. Some people want the convenience of having the owners nearby in case something comes up. Other people may want the privacy and don't necessarily want the owners, you know, being in uh, maybe on, on a separate floor from where they're staying. Mm-hmm. And some Airbnbs are just a room within a house. So it's, this al- is true. it's important to be very clear of, you know, is it a, is it a single room within a home? Is it a, uh, a, no, a full property in and of itself? And there are times when they're listed one way, but they're actually another. So again, that's when the reviews come in handy. I've uh, come across ones that when I did a search, it came up as that it being a single property. But when you read through the reviews, they'd say, well, actually, in fact, it's not. There's a shared bathroom or, or something. Of that. Oh, yeah. That's good to know for sure. We've never had any anything negative per se to say about a property that we stayed at no we've had great experiences right because you because you pick five star uh, yeah it makes sense though well and they're not always i mean you can have five star ratings aren't necessarily expensive it's not Mm. like it's not the same as for instance the a resort or hotel industry where you're going to pay more based on the star rating it's just the reviews so if you've got a it might be a small property but it's just well uh well maintained well maintained and clean that sort of thing, then you know that you're going to, sorry, we've got a, a visitor. So I just got distracted there for a minute. Oh. 
So definitely be aware of whether or not the owners are on site because it yeah. might make a difference in whether or not you enjoy this, the stay. And, and it'll let you know whether or not you can walk around naked, you know, because if they're on site, then it's probably a no-no. Yes. Yeah. Unless they're into that. And then that also might be a definite no-no. <laughs> <laughs> or a definite yes, yes. Yes. Well, it's all, yeah, many, I would say different strokes for different folks. Um, let's see here. Number eight is around amenities. Be aware of the amenities of where you're staying in an Airbnb. Does so, it have towels? Does it have soap? Usually yeah. you, get, you get soap. Yeah. Is I mentioned the shared bathroom. Make sure that they're, you know... If you need a parking spot for a vehicle, make sure that there's parking there and you know whether or not it's free parking. Is and it which spot parking? it is too, right? Because we almost had that problem. We almost, well, we didn't almost park in the wrong spot, but it was a designated spot for us with a number on it. And right. If, particularly if you're staying in an apartment building or something like that, they might have numbered spots for other tenants yeah. and uh, other people staying maybe in other Airbnbs if it's in the same building and they have multiple units. So. Yeah, be aware. Be aware of what the amenities are. Make sure that they are what you want. Mm-hmm. Number nine is a little, uh, a little on those lines as well as around the filters. So, I mentioned there are some filters that you can use to decide whether or not you know you want how many bedrooms you want, whether it's a private bathroom, whether it's a standalone uh, property. You know, is it an entire unit in and of itself? Is it a shared room? Does it have a pool, air conditioning? There's filters for just about anything. Well, not just about anything, but there's a lot of filters to yeah, pick from. Well, smoking, non-smoking. <laughs> but my tip whatever. around filters is to double check your search results. And if you're not getting a ton of results, maybe consider um, using less filters. Right. And then just reading through the property descriptions well to make sure they have what you need. Because sometimes I, th- I think just in setting up the listings, people can click, for instance, that they don't have a pool when they do or that they you know maybe something simple like a kitchen or it may have what you need but perhaps they thought you needed to have a full dining room to click kitchen for their filter so there can just be a bit of a disconnect in terms of what the host interpretations may be of what Mm -hmm. the definitions of the filters are and particularly too if you're looking at other countries and different uh you know different cultures and how they you know name things so just double check your your search results. Don't trust your filters to absolutely. You know, you know, especially thing if you're staying down south and air conditioning is a must, and you had clicked that in your filter, make sure that it's make says sure it in that the it's listing. actually there. You're absolutely right. You wouldn't want to get there and have no air conditioning. And again, the reviews will be a huge flag for that. There. If people were in a similar circumstance, they'll pick up on those things oh, yeah. and they'll make note of them in their review. So as a reviewer, it's important to be honest, you know, so that your fellow Absolutely. Airbnb guests will, you know, have a, a great experience and be aware of any issues that you had. And also so that the host can fix any problems that there may be. Well, there's an, it's important. You probably have this as one of the tips, but it's important to actually really notice any kind of damage. I do have damage. that as one of my tips. So okay. we will, we will definitely get to that. <laughs> all right. See how good I am, people? I know if, uh, all these tips. And I didn't even see any. Yes, and if you listen to other episodes, you know that Jeff always tries to mess up my numbered lists yeah. by jumping ahead, and I just can't do the math to adjust all the numbering. So That's I've got to stick with my order. Yeah. What can I say? I'm just, uh, yeah, I just, I just know what's going on. Number eleven: Beware of extra fees that you you know may not have planned for. So just before you do that final checkout you know, check the overall total, make sure it's what you had in mind, because it could be a cleaning fee that wasn't in the original listing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do a search results and, uh, sorry, a search within a certain range of pricing that you can actually work with, uh, for each, you know, maybe it's a hundred dollars a night, but then you go to checkout and you see that they've tacked on a $300 cleaning fee. Uh, so just, that's tough. As with anything, before you hit the final click and, you know... And I never understood confirm. why they don't just include the cleaning fee in in the overall price of the property. I think it's all part of the sales, right? They I want guess. they want it to come up in those lower price range listings. Have we ever had a cl- cleaning fee for where, where, wherever we stayed? We have, yeah. Oh, really? And a cleaning fee is not necessarily a bad thing. If there's a cleaning fee, then there's an assumption there's probably professional cleaners coming in. Yeah, that's Not true. always, but, uh, I mean, we've not had any issues with, you know, not having a a clean property when we stay there. So cleaning fee is not necessarily a bad thing. Just you need to be aware and make sure that you're budgeting for it. Right. 
Number 12, um, you can use instant booking if you're in a rush. So if you're in a place where you need a last minute accommodation, maybe a hotel fell through, maybe another Airbnb booking fell through there. I do have an instant booking option where you don't need to wait for the host to reply. They, you know, really? they're, they've set it up. So basically you can go through and just book instantly. So you have just a look pay at, for it. And then they tell you where the key is and you, you stay. Well, it's just the process of checking in and everything is the same. It's just that normally through an Airbnb process, you would submit your request for a listing and then oh. it would be approved by the host. So it takes away that middle step and you're automatically approved. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. So it's uh, just a way to do it a little fast tracked if you, if you're in need. Mm-hmm. Uh, number 13, we touched on this, just that, uh, you know, government ID and there's a, a whole verification process required by Airbnb. So just make sure that your own profile is up to date and reflects everything that has been verified and that any hosts that you're booking through are also verified so that, you know, you, you know who you're dealing with and you know that it's a, a safe booking. And Nine times out of ten, you don't even really see the host, right, when you do book a No, book again, it depends on where you're staying and what yeah. the setup is. But a lot of times now they're using, you know, uh, lock boxes or, mm. or you know. Um, I, I kind of like that part. I like meeting the people who own the property. I like it when they come by and I stop. I don't like it when they're there a long time, but it's nice to meet them and. I'd say it's probably we've been about half and half with the places we've yeah. stayed in terms of meeting the actual property owners. Mm-hmm. Um, number 14 is look at the pictures of the rooms closely. So there's always a, a suite of pictures that are provided with every Airbnb listing. Make sure that you look at them closely. Look for, you know, little things that may seem show like low maintenance. Or... Yeah, things that might show low maintenance. Oh, I if see. If the pictures themselves are blurry and if the, you know, rooms are in disarray when they took the pictures, if they can't be bothered to take good pictures and even stage properly for their listing that can be a red flag that there yeah. could be other issues with the property so a big hot tip is if you're if, if the, you got a photo of the bathroom and it's got a tiny little bit of toilet paper on the roll rather than a brand new toilet paper roll they need to do some work with their staging good one honey thanks <laughs> i just thought of that one right now so you're saying that's how that's how quickly and brilliantly my mind works. You're saying when people don't replace the toilet paper roll, it's quite a turn off. That's right. I I have never in my life left the toilet paper roll empty anywhere except for the garbage. Really? You say that with <laughs> What's a straight the next face. Tip? What's the next tip, honey? <laughs> Number 15 is ask a friend for recommendations. People that's are staying one. in Airbnbs all the time now, so it's worth it if you're, you know, if you're staying locally. Uh, you know, somewhere nearby, you could probably just ask around to friends, but you do a post on Facebook, say, hey, I'm heading to, you know, I'm heading to Montreal yep. this weekend. Anybody have recommendations? There's no better, you know, in my mind, better recommendation or review than somebody, you know, telling you it's a great property. So, yeah, um, you yeah. know, that's, that's true. A, it's ask it, friends for recommendations. And that's kind of the way Airbnb works in many ways, right? It's it is by word of mouth. Well, they do have some referral programs yeah. and things set up. I've never used them, but I, I, I think they still have them. Mm. Number 16 is make sure that when you are communicating for your with your host and paying for your property, uh, paying for the room, do it all through the Airbnb portal. There are some people who are some hosts that will try to sort of coax you off of the, the system and, and do it, you know, On as a, an aside. And, and as kind an of email take, money transfer or something like that. Right, and take Airbnb out of the picture. Airbnb has all kinds of things in place to protect both the host and the guest and you should take advantage of that and make sure all of your communications are through them because they can protect you in in the case of last minute uh, you know cancellations and things like that they can they could they could basically say nope sorry you're not getting your money back you didn't play by my rules well that's true and if you if you are doing communications and payments outside of their portal then yeah you're basically taking them out of the equation and you can't really call them for help if you need it Number 17 is just be aware of what's included as far as what's actually in the kitchen and in the washroom. You know, oh, yeah. if you need to bring shampoo, if you need to bring condiments, yeah. you don't want to be in the middle of trying to make a meal and be caught off guard that they don't have salt and pepper or some of the basics. So again, you can find that usually in the listing or even in the reviews and know what to bring. Yeah, that's true. Number 18 is bring a portable speaker. Put yes. that one in there for you, hon. I never forget the portable speaker. And this next batch is what was, that was sort of all the prep of what do you do beforehand. The next batch is sort of what do you do once you arrive. 
Number 19 is what you mentioned is check for damage. Uh, Mm -hmm. As soon as you arrive, it's like when you pick up a rental car, you do a walk around, you do an inspection, you make sure that there's not a dent that you're going to be blamed for. And just, you know, do a quick check of the property. And if there's anything major, then make sure you, you know, take a, if you've got a phone, take a picture to document it and communicate it back to the owner. Don't try to hide it. Yeah. Because it's good uh, to take pictures. Chances are it will be found and you want to make sure that they're aware that you brought it to their attention at the beginning of the stay and it wasn't something that you caused. It's good to take pictures too before you get all your stuff all over the place if you really wanted to keep a, you know, a memory for posterity. Yeah, that's a good tip for any time you go on vacation, yeah. right? Before you mess up the whole hotel room. Take yep. a nice picture for Take Instagram. Take a nice picture first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number 20, check for hidden cameras. I I mean, I, I laugh at this one a little bit, but there have been incidents of, of properties with yeah, hidden cameras. Yeah, there have. I might Not be a little us, bit but... paranoid, but... Um, I still check. If you're in a a bedroom and there's a weird placement of a mirror or something that looks a little off, just do a glance around and make sure that there aren't hidden cameras. There's some weird people out there and can, you know, I saw this Better thing safe that than sorry. I saw I this do that in uh, hotels too. I thing that's like it's like a spy thing online where you it, it it flashes LED lights and you look you put your eye up to it and it flashes out into the room and it will notify you of any hidden camera because that's how cameras work through through like uh, the flashes and stuff like the lenses rather you know it'll it'll reflect it's something back. you buy it'll reflect back yeah. Okay. And it'll, it'll show you where any hidden camera is. Well, that's interesting. I wonder if it's an expensive thing. I don't know. At the very least, just do a quick scan on your own and, and look for anything. If it looks off, then maybe just check it. Number 21 is to do a safety scan. So just be sure that, you know, that there's smoke detectors in place. Be aware of where the fire extinguishers are located. If there's a kitchen, um, make sure you are aware of the fire escape route. route. That's something you could do quickly too, right? Yeah, you know, definitely. And it's a building a little... that you're not familiar with. You want to make sure you can get out in the case of a fire. And if you've got kids, it's a great time to walk around and have them point out potential mm-hmm. safety hazards we absolutely stayed at a place um in granada that had an indoor pool that was literally off the kitchen and the living room so you know that was could be a huge hazard hazard with kids but we that walked around and place. they they pointed out the hazards and it, it you know it, it made them aware and got them thinking about safety so just a good a exercise spider, to do. right a, we have to check for spiders too <laughs> <laughs> it's just a good practice to do anytime you're staying anywhere yeah. i think is to uh do that little safety scan this stuff only takes a few minutes on arrival i know it seems excessive but i think in the in the end it pays off if you have an incident you know how to get out safely number 22 is uh this is we recently had an incident locally in the paper where uh, people were left their airbnb went out to the movies and came back and there was somebody hiding in their closet which is terrifying um check to make sure that you're Check so, your, make your sure no property one's is hiding. still empty if you're leaving for the day and maybe coming back. What because was the story remember, with that, though? Like, why were well, they I don't really closet? have... Okay, you'll I have to Google that one. All right. Uh, <laughs> this doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I think that they were probably just not well mentally, but it's... Um, okay. Yeah, just be aware that other people have keys to the property. The owners have keys to the property. So that's just something you should be aware mm. of and make sure you know who is in the in the building. Um, number 23, make sure you get yourself a good review as a guest, you know, don't leave the place a mess, leave it the way you found it. If you're going to be late checking in, send a quick communication. So the host isn't waiting around for you. Be courteous. Don't ask questions that you can just Google the answers to, you know, just the little things and a little thank you note can make a huge difference or a drawing or a drawing, which you've done too. And it was very appreciated. It was. It I was think mentioned they, I think in it's the probably review. still on the uh, fridge. Maybe. Number 24 is be reasonable with your own reviews. You know, mm-hmm. you don't expect perfection. If you're in a tropical tropical country, there is, you know, there may there will be spiders. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and scorpions. Ants. We had scorpions. It, yes, there was a scorpion. Yes. Nicaragua. But, you know. Not many, though. It's, um, yeah, it sounds like it sounds like a horror movie the way it's described. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, there was. It, sometimes you have to be aware of the environment and some things that just because they're not something we're used to are not are normal for that area. So they don't warrant necessarily a bad review. Yeah. And number twenty five is something you alluded to earlier. If you can't find a property on Airbnb, Airbnb has been around since two thousand and seven. It's actually not the original. It's based off of something called vacation rental by owner. 
which is abbreviated VRBO. That's been around since 1995. Oh, yeah. It has its own app, own website, and it has a whole different group of listings. Some properties are on both sites. I was going to ask that, but yeah. we stayed at a very unique uh, property in San Juan del Sur that was only on VRBO. Yeah. So we would not have found it. If, you know, We couldn't find it on Airbnb, but we knew it was a rental property, and there, lo and behold, it was on VRBO, which has been around a lot longer. So if there's properties that have been rental properties for quite some time, mm-hmm. chances are they're on VRBO. You can find anything in your price range, too, which is great. You know, you could find something cheaper or something more expensive if you want. If you really need somewhere to stay, well, you'll be able to find it on Airbnb. So that was uh, 25 rapid tips on Airbnbs. I hope yeah. that you found them useful and uh, that it helps with your next Airbnb experience. And, you know, don't let it scare you off. We've had nothing but great experiences. Yeah. Just like anything, it's just a matter about being aware, doing your research, planning ahead, and you can have a, an amazing time. Great a way great to save time. money and see beautiful places. Yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening. And remember, you can catch up on past episodes at infoquench.com. Or just about anywhere else you get your podcasts. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And help spread the word about InfoQuench. Till Til next, next time. time.